while I have you all here with me, I thought I would just come back and let's do a little Bible study on uh, Joshua. Here we are, and I am excited um, because thank you all that joined me just a moment ago uh, for that interview. I want to remind all of you who are joining me now that um, I have a special uh, time in the Lord, I believe, coming up in July. I have uh, been working with Debbie all morning getting the uh, school in order, and I want to encourage you, uh, if you are not already planning on being with us for School of Worship in July, you need to reconsider that and think about it. I believe God's going to do a mighty thing. I have a great new word in my spirit. I have, uh, Harry and I both are meditating on a lot of new things God's put in our spirit. Uh, it, I just feel like there's going to be an awakening, an outpouring like uh, maybe we've never seen before and certainly like we haven't seen in a long time. So I'm encouraging you to call or register online for the July school if you haven't already. If I have contacted you or Debbie has contacted you about the extra classes, the optional classes, please give us an answer. I'm trying to get those classes in order for the flow class. Uh, that will be the prophetic flow class, whether it's an in, your instrument. If you uh, play an instrument, you'll need to bring that instrument or uh, uh, prophetic dance or prophetic flag. All those classes would be available for you. And so um, I'm encouraging you to answer uh, me or Debbie in our text for those just so I can get those in order. And then um, reminding you, if you are in the Arizona area, or you could fly in for it. June the 5th and 6th will be in uh, Goodyear, Arizona. That's the Phoenix area with Pastors Ron and Laura Villar. We were with them this past weekend also. Pastor Ron is doing amazing miracle story as he is recuperating after four, um, uh, getting four uh, either stents or balloons in uh, blocked arteries and uh, after having two massive heart attacks, God has done an amazing miracle for them. We'll be back with them uh, June the 5th and 6th for our scheduled meeting. And uh, the 5th will be a ladies' day, uh, ladies' time together. I believe it begins at 10 o'clock in the morning and then uh, Sunday morning, June the 6th at 10 a.m. I look forward for all of you who can be there to come and be with us. Uh, don't, I'm going to encourage you, don't skip a chapter in um, this uh, Bible study. If, you have, uh, if you're with me live and you've missed uh, chap verses 1, 2, 3, or chapter 1, 2, 3, or 4, please go back and watch those. Uh, they're powerful, and this is a story chapter, so it builds chapter upon chapter, and sometimes it'll make a reference back to something that we simply just covered, and it'll make a lot more sense to you if you've, if you've done all the chapters as we go. And the Lord just reveals and opens our eyes to see things that weren't there before or that we didn't see before it was there, but we didn't have eyes to see. Uh, do you have any questions or uh, comments? And thanks all of you who just came back. Hi, Charlie and Sonny and Lisa and Dana. I appreciate all of you. Um, Yes, I just decided while I'm here and I got my hair and my makeup on and the room is actually cool because it's getting hot here in the desert um, that I would go on and do chapter 5. Um, this starts with God's people at Gilgal. That's the topic in the new Passion uh, Translation. Um, if you don't have this and you'd like to order it from our website, please uh, do so. I've got a new shipment coming in. We'll get them out to you. Uh, the moment they come in, we'll have your package ready to go. We'll slip it in and off it'll go to you. Verse 1, chapter 5. All the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea became terrified of the Israelites. Now remember, all these um, heathenistic um, nations, the Canaanite nation, the uh, the uh, Amorite nation, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, all of these uh, heathenistic nations, and they had kings. And they were living in the promised land that God had promised already to Abraham and his descendants. And now we have Moses. God told Moses, take my people in. And he, he got them out of bondage. He got them to the promised land. But because of their unbelief, they circled it for 40 years 
waiting for every person who didn't believe to die. Now you've got everyone in this group is 40 years old or younger because everybody else has died. So all the people that are now in the nation of Israel, all a million of them, are 40 years old and under because they've all been birthed during the wandering or the circling of the promise. The only two people who are over 40 years old are Joshua and Caleb, the only two spies, number chapter 13, who believed God's promise to go in and take the land. Everyone else doubted. The nation believed what the 10 negative reports were given. And so the nation had to die. All the leaders had to die. All the people had to die. But the two who believed in the first place, Joshua and Caleb, they got to not only go into the promise 40 years later, they got to lead the million people who had been born during that 40 years. They are getting to lead them into the promised land. So that gives you a little background. Now the Amorite king west of the Jordan and the Canaanite king along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea became terrified of the Israelites. For when they heard how Yahweh miraculously dried up the Jordan so the Israelites could cross over all their courage melted away. At that time, Yahweh commanded Joshua. Now here we have an amazing commandment. Listen, make knives of flint and circumcise the men of Israel again, which means these people that were circling the promise that did not believe stopped obeying the law of circumcision also. They stopped obeying the law. So there were many, many, many multitudes of men that had not been circumcised. So they were not in physical covenant with God. Now, you say physical covenant with God is circumcision? Yeah, physical, circum physical covenant with God is also your tithe because your tithe is a circumcision of your finances. It's giving God, cutting off the 10% that will be unproductive and unfruitful if you keep it. But if you give it to God, it makes the whole of your income fruitful and productive. Whew! Glory to God. Why would anybody hold 10% of unproductive, unfruitful, when you can give it to God and he'll cause the whole to be fruitful and productive? He said, make knives of flint and circumcise the men of Israel again. So Joshua made stone knives and circumcised all the men at a place they named Circumcision Hill. Joshua had to circumcise all the men and boys, all the fighting men, although they had been circumcised. See, some had been circumcised before leaving Egypt. The male children born during the 40 years they spent in the wilderness had not been circumcised, which basically, according to the prior chapters, basically means everybody because nobody lived other than Joshua and Caleb uh, that were over 40 years old. Also, by the end of that 40 years, all the fighting men who had come out of Egypt had died because they had not listened to the voice of Yahweh. So Yahweh had made an oath that they would not see the land. He had promised to give their ancestors a fertile land. So he raised up their sons in their place and Joshua circumcised them because they had not been circumcised on the way. Wow, you got the story straight now. After the circumcision was completed, the whole nation waited in the camp course they did. Men who've just been circumcised are not about to be running around. So after the circumcision was completed, the whole nation waited in the camp until their wounds had healed. Then Yahweh said to Joshua, once all the men's wounds had been healed, today I have rolled away your disgrace from being slaves in Egypt. I just want you to understand that today any disgrace, any shame, any blame, any pride, any guilt that you've been carrying, today God will roll it away if you will let him. God will roll it away like the stones are rolled away like from the tomb. Like Gilgal man means the rolling away of the stones. I'm telling you, God is doing a work in all of us. He's lifting shame and blame and pride. He's lifting guilt and and. and the uncircumcised parts of our heart. Father, I ask you to circumcise our hearts, circumcise our lives, circumcise our finances in the place where unproductive and unfruitful we have kept it out of fear and out of lack of understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we trust you. And anybody that wants in on this, I want you to say today, 
I receive my healing and I receive the removal of all disgrace. I remove, I receive the removal of the rolling away of all disgrace in the name of Jesus. For that reason, the place is named Gilgal, rolling away to this day. While encamped at Gilgal, verse 10, not far from Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Feast of Passover in the evening of the 14th day of the month. 14, if you've read my new book, you will understand not only does it mean salvation from tones of the throne room, it means deliverance. It also is that middle of the month when a woman produces an egg and she can become impregnated. So this is a vision day. This is a about to get pregnant with the vision of God, a, about to get pregnant with the vision of the promise. So when he says 14, it's a day of impregnation, including in the spirit, you can be impregnated with the vision of God, impregnated with the fulfillment of your destiny, impregnated with the new move, the new place, the new thing that God has. I don't know about you, but that's just jump up down and sh run around the room and shout for a little bit. God has a great day for us on this 14th day of the month of Abib, which is the first month of the year on the 14th day. The very next day, which is the 15th day, and 15 means rest, they ate for the first time food grown in Canaan, roasted grain and flatbread made without yeast. So this would be like uh, their, un their unleavened bread as, as the bread of Passover. On that day, when they ate the produce of the land, so we are in Passover right now, the manna stopped falling from heaven. See, they had been receiving manna from heaven for 40 years. God was feeding them manna from heaven and still until they started eating from the promised land. God's been feeding you for years, waiting for you to step into your promise so you can eat from your promise. You can either be given manna from heaven for a period of time, but eventually God says you grow up and roll away your disgrace, and step into your promise, and eat from your promise. On that day, on the 15th day, which is rest, when they ate the produce of the land, when they ate from the promise, the manna stopped falling from heaven. The Israelites never ate manna again, but that year they enjoyed the fruit of the land of Canaan. Now they're eating off of crops and the fruit of the land that they did not plant, for they have not been in there until now. They are eating off of the promise that God has in place for them as they obediently walk into their promise. I just want you to know when you step over into your promise, God will feed you there. God will feed you there with what's waiting for you. The commander and the armies of heaven, verse 13. When Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw standing in front of him a man holding a drawn sword. Joshua approached him and said, Are you on our side or on our enemy's side? What a question. Neither, he replied. I have not come to take sides, but to take charge. Glory to God. I have not come to take sides, but I have come to to take charge. Now, I want to read that to you again. When Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw standing in front of him a man holding a drawn sword. Now, <clears throat> anybody got an idea? This is not just a man, is it? This is not just a man. There is nothing in the text to indicate that this was a vision. Joshua physically saw this tangible man standing before him. This encounter was not a matter of Joshua gaining the allegiance of the Lord, but of the Lord gaining the allegiance of Joshua. In other words, you've got to decide. Stop asking God to be on your side and you get on his. I'm getting on God's side. I'm not asking him, Lord, be on my side and against my enemies. I'm like, Lord, I'm on your side. And if they're your enemies, they're my enemies. Whoa, that changes everything, doesn't it? 
When Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw standing in front of him a man holding a drawn sword. That sword was not in its sheath, so this man was there for war. Joshua approached him and said, Are you on our side or on our enemy's side? Neither, he replied. I have not come to take sides. I have come to take charge. I am the commander of Yahweh's army. So who did he just come face to face with? Anybody want to name the commander of Yahweh's armies? At once, Joshua threw himself face down to the ground and worshipped. And he said to him, I will do whatever you command, my Lord. The commander of Yahweh's army said to Joshua, Remove your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. And Joshua obeyed. Who was this commander of Yahweh's armies? It was not Michael. Nope. Michael answers to this commander of Yahweh's armies. Michael answers to this commander. This is Jesus who is in charge. Hierarchy of heaven. If you've been to school of worship, you've already heard me teach this. Jesus is in charge of the commander of the angel armies. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of the, he is the commander. He is the prince. He is the warrior. Jesus is is a warrior. And when you are hidden inside of him, you are a warrior too. You are not a mamby, pamby, wimpy, poor me person. Uh Uh-uh. That is not who you are. You are a warrior and you are under and inside of and within and entangled with and one with the commander of the Lord's armies. And his name is Jesus Christ. Christ, Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he's come and his sword is drawn. And he says, I am not here to take a side. I am here to take charge. Woo! Glory to God. I'm excited. God is here. He has sent Jesus here to take charge of our lives and to take charge of our position. And then Jesus left the earth and he said, I'm leaving you in charge, those of you who are hidden inside of me, and I give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is my power, and I give you the baptism of fire, which is my authority, and you go in my power, and you go in my authority, and there is no army of the enemy that can stand against you, for you are not sent here to take sides. You are sent here to take charge, just like your King Jesus. You are to take charge over every demonic force and get the job done and quit asking, is this for me or is this what I'm supposed to do? Come on, get your sword drawn like you're Jesus. Get your sword drawn and stop asking to take sides and take charge of this war and finish. Take off your sandals right where you are. Get on your face and worship him right where you are. For you are standing, you are seated, your feet are on holy ground for you are are the one he has left in charge with his power, with his authority. Come on and take the ground and get the heathen out of here and push back the demonic force and get people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized with fire for God is calling us to step up and get this job finished for our King and for for our Lord. Hallelujah. This is a time like no other. God is calling you. A time like no other. God is calling you. I am telling you, this is your moment in history. Don't miss what God is doing. It's a small, short chapter filled with the power of God. And you have been called up. You have been drafted by the Holy Ghost and his power. And you have been drafted by the fire and the authority that Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Ghost and you will baptize. I will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and I will baptize you in fire. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie and he will baptize 
baptize you with the Holy Ghost and he will baptize you with fire. I'm telling you the baptism of the Holy Ghost is here for us. The power of God through the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire which brings you the authority in the name of Jesus. Don't back down. Don't turn around. Don't walk off and lay down. I'm telling you God has called you up and you have his power. You have his authority and the call is on your life. Let's finish this. Get your sword out of its sheath. Get it drawn and hold it up. You're not here to take sides. You're here to take charge in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Glory to God. I love you all. I appreciate you being with me. I appreciate your longing to be more and to do more. And I'm encouraging you, get your books ordered, get your CDs downloaded and ordered, get your Bibles ordered, get this Joshua, Judges, and Ruth ordered, get your registration in for July, and let's go higher. Boom. Boom.